What we did here, everything is based on the popular vote. We used a combination of Twitter polls and the PFF mock simulator. So without further ado, this is the official 2023 People's Mock Draft. Nice. All yeah, right? So don't get yeah. mad at us, all yes. right? Yes, this is on you. We asked you guys <laughs> to vote on Twitter earlier this week. Over 2,000 of you went with uh, what most of the mocks have been saying with the first overall pick, the Carolina Panthers. DJ, they go with Bryce Young. I'm with the people on this one. So I was hoping when we flip these rolls around, I'd be able to just really attack these picks. Yeah, yeah, I, should, I think yeah, this yeah. is the right pick. There's still time. There. He's the best yeah. player in the draft to me. I, I think you move up there, you want a, a sure thing. I know the size, I know it. But to me, on the field, the tape is outstanding. I feel like the Carolina Panthers, a new era has begun. Okay, another Heisman Trophy winner going first overall. We love to see it. How about this? The Houston fans on PFF agree they want a quarterback, and they overwhelmingly agree that quarterback should be C.J. Stroud, Bucky. So what I love about the people is the people didn't fall for the smoke screen. <laughs> uh -huh. They went for it. They got the second-best quarterback in the draft in C.J. Stroud, someone that can anchor their franchise for a long time. D'Amico Ryans now has a franchise quarterback to build his team around. Oh, good days ahead for the Houston Texans. They better start screwing up some of these picks. Or we're going to be out of a I know. What are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> picks here soon. I wonder how the people would feel if Will Anderson ended up in Houston. Well, they didn't in this exercise because Will Anderson, he goes to Arizona. Right? Again, the people exercising some three sensibility three, huh? here, right? I mean, like, look, you get a guy who could have been in the conversation to be the first edge rusher off the board in last year's draft, comes back to Alabama. And I think with all the uncertainty around the Arizona franchise right now, new regime head coach GM, you got Kyler Murray, you know, we don't know when we're going to see him next year. You, you need somebody you can count on on the defensive side of the ball. I think that is Will Anderson, eight and a half to ten and a half sacks a year with that player from uh, from Alabama. Okay, so no surprises just yet. No surprise here. Obviously, the fans picking for the Colts, drafting a quarterback over 90% of the time. <laughs> they know that they need a quarterback. So, DJ, tell me about what they're getting with Will Levis, if that's the way that they go. Yeah, that's been a lot of the buzz, right? Will Levis with the Indianapolis Colts. And to me, you're getting somebody that has a very intriguing skill set. You jump into the video and you watch him. Some things that just jump out at you. Number one is the power arm. They are high velocity throws, those drive throws. Then you see deep balls like this one where you can get it out and up over the top. You want somebody with the arm strength to squeeze the ball in those tight NFL windows. He's had to do that in the best conference in college football in the SEC. Off platform stuff, there's usually some good and some bad with that. Yeah. You see some big time throws that also will impact his accuracy. He got hit a ton over the last two years. There's no questioning his toughness. And then it's time to hurdle. Let's get up in the air and let's show you how athletic there you are. Is. When you have a healthy toe, he did not have that this year. Had the toe injury, had the shoulder injury. That impacted his ability to run with the football. I think with the Indianapolis Colts, you look at their their offense with Shane Steichen coming from Philadelphia, Jalen Hurts running the football, athletic quarterback, you can connect some dots. Yeah, and I think you touched on a little bit of it there, DJ, as well. That competitive toughness with Levis, you like. You just wish he didn't have to use it all the time. I wish he could get out of a little bit more trouble, get the ball out of his hands before he takes some of those hits. And I think there, there's a couple of things to like. It's that he's played for a couple of NFL coaches. Liam Cohen, Rich Scangarello there at Kentucky. He's got some of that um, in his knowledge base. And I think if you're deciding between Levis and Richardson, I think maybe you have an opportunity to see Levis on the field a little bit sooner. And that's the debate. Obviously, there's concerns about whether Anthony Richardson can start right away. So, Bucky, I mean, what would you see with – Shane Steichen paired with Anthony Richardson. It feels like that could be a Jalen Hurtsy type offense too. It certainly could be a Jalen Hurts like offense. When you think about Anthony Richardson and what he brings to the table, you're talking about someone with intriguing traits when it comes to big time arm talent, outstanding athleticism, can move around the pocket, can make plays inside and outside the pocket, and he does it with a little pizzazz. And so we think about Shane Steichen being able to take this kind of talent and put it into play. Look at the job that he did with Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts nearly won the MVP, had an outstanding game in the Super Bowl. This guy doesn't have the experience that Jalen Hurts, but he certainly offers some intriguing traits that are very, very similar to the guy that just got paid, the highest paid quarterback in the national. You don't go 80 yards against <laughs> SEC defense. Like LSU as you, just, you don't do no, that. No. You're not supposed That's to. not normal. No. no. And he's still going. Okay, there you go. Now he's into the end zone. Yeah, yeah you love it. Oh, a spike. Threat. Yeah. Been a hey, here's the thing. Like, um, you know, you've got Gardner Minshew there for the Colts. You can run him out as your starter this year and feel pretty good about it. You don't have to thrust Anthony Richardson into the lineup there. I think that's another reason 
to like that fit so you can give him some time to mature into that role and into that scheme. Yeah, Michael Pittman Jr. talking about how excited he is for Shane Steichen's offense, the passing game. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's really excited to find out who's going to be passing him the ball <laughs> in that yeah. offense. Yeah. And in this exercise, we're going with Will Levis. The fans are going with oh, Will Levis. All right. All okay. Right, fans. So now let's go to five here. Seattle going D-line over 80% of the time in this mm. exercise. And the fans, they want Jalen Carter, DJ. Well, look. As a football player, he's the best in the draft. He was my number one player, and obviously there's things that surfaced off the field that were troubling. Teams have had to do their homework on him. As a player, I have no questions. He is a dominant force, and guys like him along the interior are extremely hard to find. Think about Pete Carroll. You think about his roots, Buck, going all the way back to Monty Kiffin. Monty Kiffin coached Warren Sapp. So same high school, Jalen Carter, same high school as Warren Sapp. Mm -hmm. That type of a difference maker. Okay, so it's basically a runaway for Carter to the Seahawks. We've seen him mocked there in Bucky's and DJ's latest mocks. Nearly 45% of the mocks run through the PFF simulator have him finding a home in Seattle. With some Lions fans holding out hope yeah. that he falls to them with the next pick. And that next pick, it's Devin Witherspoon heading to Detroit, Bucky. A big time playmaker uh, on the perimeter. Aaron Glenn, defense coordinator for the Detroit Lions, wants to play more sticky man-to-man -man coverage. Well, Devon Witherspoon gives you the opportunity to do it in a variety of different ways. He can press, he can play off. He has great instincts and awareness. Will tackle on the perimeter. Woo! And as you think about the Lions about to take over this division, they have to get a little bit better on defense to do it. Devin Witherspoon gives them an opportunity to do that. And he reunites with his former college teammate and roommate, uh, Kirby Joseph, there in cool. Detroit. So you love to see that. Okay, so what do the Raiders do at this point? We asked the people, and it's not even close. Over 44% say quarterback here. So, Rhett, how about Anthony Richardson sitting behind Jimmy G in Vegas? Yeah, look, I like it. And I think, um, you know, if Devin Witherspoon was on the board here, that might have been a thought uh, for the Raiders. But he's off the board, so they go with the fourth quarterback off the board. Look, by now we know the potential, and we also know the pitfalls. But so is Anthony Richardson, which I think is one aspect of his draft profile that we don't talk about a lot. He does sound like a mature player and a self-aware player, much more, more so than the 13 career starts would suggest. He knows he's not accurate enough consistently. He knows he did not put up enough production uh, this past year, uh, uh, certainly enough that his uh, skill set would warrant. And so uh, he is actively working on that and talking about that. I just felt like I was really impressed uh, with him in, in the way that he talks about his game. And once again, Jimmy G finds himself hanging out with a first round <laughs> quarterback. Cool. So we've seen corners end up in Atlanta and a lot of mocks, but the fans are going with an edge rusher over half of the time, and it's Tyree Wilson, DJ. Yeah, they've made some improvements here over the last month or so on that defensive front. We think about bringing in Calais Campbell, adding Bud Dupree. But they need more. You've got to be able to get after the quarterback, something they have struggled to do off the edge. Yeah, Terry Fontenot building up that defensive line, getting some help there for Grady Jarrett as well. So to recap here, and again, don't get mad at us. Mm -hmm. You did this to yourself. <laughs> this is a fan's mock. Four quarterbacks in the top seven, Will Anderson and Jalen Carter finding landing spots. We've grown accustomed to seeing, and the Lions make Devin Witherspoon the first corner off the board. Coming up, he's the number three player in this draft, according to DJ. Where does Bijan Robinson go in the fans mock draft? And do we like the pick? Find out next. Back on Mock Draft Live, he's the Bears' most popular pick in a lot of mocks, including this one, Peter Skaronsky to Chicago, Buck. Well, you get someone to protect Justin Fields, and so Skaronsky gives them a physical presence, a point of attack, great balance in body control, in run and pass protection, and so it's a nice fit for the Chicago Bears. They have to get better up front if they want to win. Is he going to yeah. ride his bike over the facility? For Maybe. You know. yeah. <laughs> the Golds do not have their quarterback sacked 55 times uh, this coming season. <laughs> Just so we're clear, guys, I did not vote multiple times for the Eagles in this poll. We asked you which team should take Bijan oh, Robinson on Thursday now night. we're talking. And Rhett, the winner yeah. is Philadelphia. <clears throat> but fans, Howie doesn't take running backs in the first <laughs> round. It's way too early for a running back. They need offensive line, defensive line more. This is ridiculous. That was me. Worst pick said. in this mock draft. <laughs> I can't believe it. Great. Oh, but by the way, it'd be a really cool pick, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> commitment to the run game, trying to maximize the championship window. Go get one of the best players in this draft. I'm fine with it. Like, I will criticize it, but then I will love it. Of course. At the same time. You're yeah. criticizing so all things, love yes. it. Criticize it, but love it. DJ, despite the position, you still have him near the top of your board. Um, we know that running backs are devalued.
undervalued, blah, blah, blah. But what makes him different from some of the guys that have come out recently? Well, he can do everything. And to me, he's in that elite class. And I've been championing this and saying and begging Philadelphia to do this, knowing full well that they won't, having worked there. But when you watch him, he's very loose and explosive. A lot, a lot of times you get guys that are fast, they're really tightly wound. He's not. He has juice, but he can also make you miss. You see it in the short area quickness here. His ability to stop and start and to get up to full speed is outstanding. He's going to make the free man miss every single time you get in space. Mm. You see this throughout his tapes. The number of missed tackles he forced was off the charts this past season and throughout his career. Then you want to get him out in the route. You can do it from the backfield. You can line him up in the route. Watch him go up and get this one contact catch as he's going down. I mean, to me, he expands your playbook. Mm. And I look at this from the Eagles perspective of what teams in the NFC, what's the player they don't want to see? go to the Philadelphia Eagles. If you kind of look at it from that side of things, look at it a little differently. You would not want to defend that Philadelphia Eagles offense with all their pieces in place, and now you just drop B. John Robinson in there. Again, I would, I would have had a great time at Stanford. It was never going to happen. Um, <laughs> this is something I think would be great, but it's probably not going to happen. No, it will, it will be great. And going back and watching Bijan, it reminds me of my first year scouting. Ladanian Thompson was in the draft. And that's when you drafted running backs high. And when you look at B. John Robinson's skills, you talk about the ability to make plays, not only as a runner between the tackles, but getting on the perimeter in the passing game, doing it a bunch of different ways. Remember, Ladanian put a bunch of points by putting the ball in the paint yeah. as a receiver and a runner. B. John Robinson should be able to do the same. Yeah, I personally love the rumor that involves this next team picking, sending Derrick Henry to oh. the Eagles, but we don't have time to talk about that right now. At 11, the Titans fans, they want a tackle, Bucky, and it's Parrish Johnson Jr. Oh, big dancing bear on the edge. Uh, Parrish Johnson Jr., Mike Vrabel last year saw what happened when his offensive line was decimated, and so now you have an opportunity to get an edge protector, someone to really shore up the edges as they bring in a new era of this offense in Tennessee. And so, yeah, it makes sense. Paris Johnson Jr. is the best tackle available at this point. So, yeah, you take him, you grab him, put him in. Yeah, Taylor Luan gone. You get an immediate replacement right there. Okay, so we'll get some answers this week, thankfully. I can only go on like this for so long, guys. <laughs> the 2023 NFL Draft presented by Bud Light. It's this week, live April 27th through the 29th. NFL Network Draft coverage is presented by Verizon with additional coverage on ABC, ESPN, and streaming on the NFL Channel and NFL Plus. So don't tell me you can't find it because it will be everywhere. Multiple <laughs> places for you guys. So they drafted CJ Stroud with their first pick. Now the Texans are back on the clock at 12. Ooh. 50 percent mm. of the time Houston takes a wide receiver in the PFF mock simulator. Interesting. OK, uh, so which wide out should it be? We asked you and you answered with over 80 percent of the votes. Rhett, it's Jackson Smith and Jigba. The Buckeyes are just multiplying in Houston. Yeah, look, I think I would have preferred somebody on the defensive line um, for the Texans here, like a, a Lucas Van Ness from Iowa. But look, JSN, since we already drafted CJ Stroud, we've got some built-in chemistry, uh, right? Some built-in productivity in their histories together. I mean, gosh, they're still throwing and catching for touchdowns in that Rose Bowl performance out in Pasadena from that 2021 season. Uh, just, just a guy who is is going to be a, 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 you know, move the sticks type hey! of guy. Hey! Oh. He's a move the sticks type of guy here from the slot. Good hands, good ability to separate. Physical as well. I just, I, I like it. He's a solid pick here for Houston. And it would be cool if he was playing with his best friend, CJ Stroud. Like, love that. Love to see it. Jets fans, they want Aaron Rodgers. They want to protect Aaron Rodgers. And they want Broderick Jones out of Georgia, DJ. Yeah, I think he's still got room to grow as a player. He's a tremendous athlete. I love a lot of things you see from him on tape. He's quick. He's explosive. There's some technique stuff he can clean up. He's got kind of a goofy stance. There's things to work on. But again, he hasn't played a ton of football. I, I think the best is yet ahead of him and might be good for the Jets because if Mekhi Becton stays healthy, he might not be on the field right away. So hmm. he'll have time to grow and develop there. Okay, we love that. We love time. Uh, Patriots fans, they're on the clock now, and they select an edge rusher here at 14, Lucas Van Ness, Bucky. Oh, Hercules always gets it done coming off the edge. I know he didn't start many games at Iowa, if at all, but what he is, a very talented player, outstanding athleticism, and you think about what the Patriots want to do. They want to be versatile and dynamic on defense, use a bunch of different fronts. Well, he's a versatile player. 
play multiple spots on that front line. He is someone that I can see Bill Belichick having his eye on in this draft. Yeah, the Patriots are the most common landing spot for Van Ness and the PFF mock simulator going to New England more than twice as often as anywhere else. So who knew there were so many Patriots fans at Iowa? I did not know that. <laughs> um, you three all had him going higher in your most recent mock drafts, but it really doesn't seem like he's been talked about as much as some of the other guys that we've seen in this class. So DJ, what's the tape say? Yeah, I can show you a little tape here, Colleen, about why there's buzz in league circles. Maybe if it hasn't mm -hmm. gotten out to the media quite as much, you see it and you hear it when you talk to folks around the league. The power rush, you see him just go right through your shoulder pads. He can knock you back and set the edge in the run game. He's got some real shock in his hands. I the like ability to play that. outside and then slide inside, I think, is is a big weapon for him. I actually like him better rushing from the outside, Agreed. but he can rush from the inside. One of the things that makes him so good is he never stops. It is relentless from snap to whistle and usually through the whistle. He makes his presence known. So to me, I think you got to have a plan for him and what you're going to do with him. I like kicking him out, giving him a little bit of a runway on the edge, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden that burst and that speed – it's like Rashawn Gary tested exactly like Rashawn Gary. So that's the type of player you're getting. I'd keep him on the edge. Okay. Hey, look, I mean, you, you get a guy to pair with Matthew Judon, too. It just feels like then you can. He's, he's a perfect compliment. He's a on. nice number two pass rusher. Yeah. You don't necessarily need to be the number one. Perfect number two pass rusher. That's why I think he does have a lot of buzz in league circle. And don't sleep on the connection there when you think about Coach the Ferentz Ferentz and, yeah. and Belichick and how intermingled those two are. Well, let's the, not forget Josh Uche had 11 and a half sacks last year, too, yeah. for New England. So there is some opportunity for, you know, Van Ness to be a rotational piece out on the edge, but also to provide some of that interior pressure if you need to on passing down. The people, they got that pick right. I like, that, I like pick. that one. We like yeah. that. Okay, next up, everyone's been connecting these dots for weeks at this point. The fans, oh, yeah. they're into it too. Dalton Kincaid to the Packers, Rhett. Okay, so no wide receivers in the first round, but I guess tight ends are okay. Yeah, yes. Green Bay. Yeah, we're into that. All right, so look, best pure pass catcher uh, in this draft from the tight end spot, maybe amongst all the receivers as well. He's got the speed and craftiness to generate separation from the tight end spot, but also the ability with the hands and the ability to make those kind of combat catches and acrobatic catches means he doesn't necessarily have to create all that separation. So I like that given a young quarterback in Jordan Love eventually um, the uh, the option of having a guy who can get open and, and you know have those consistent catches available to him. A first round skill position player for let's, the Packers. Have it. So, I mean, How about we've that? Been waiting. We've yes. been waiting. Javon Walker Maybe needed some year. company <laughs> yeah, from uh, exactly. 2002. <laughs> so nearly halfway through the first round a real run on offense in the last seven picks. Three tackles go off the board. A couple skill position guys with B. John Robinson leading the way at 10th overall. And the guy we just talked about, Lucas Van Ness, heading to New England. So one name we have not called yet, Christian Gonzalez. I can't believe he's still sitting there. Our guys have had fans in their mentions for months about their mock draft mistakes. So they have some thoughts on what's happening here when we come back. Devin Witherspoon. Devin Witherspoon with the interception. And did I mention something about Witherspoon? The tremendous corner. Yeah, he's been having an All-American year. Joey Porter Jr. Joey Porter in coverage. He can be an electric playmaker. He's not just a cover corner. He will come up and hit you. Christian Gonzalez. Throw it, pick, intercepted. Intercepted. Once again, and Christian Gonzalez has come back home to reclaim his turf. Hey parents, running back is cool and all, but maybe have your kids play corner <laughs> instead. Just throwing it out there. Here are Bucky's top five corners in this draft class. And so far, we've only seen one come off the board, but the Commanders fans, they want a corner, Buck. They deserve to have a corner. No. <laughs> They deserve it. And it's Christian Gonzalez. Yeah, look, Christian Gonzalez is the perfect fit for this team because they want to play better defense. You think about all the offense in the NFC East, the wide receivers that are also in that division. You need to have a big body who will not only has the ability to press but can play off, has great ball skills because turnovers are the number one decided factor in football. Mm -hmm. And DJ, look, this is madness. There's no way that he's falling this far, right? Zero, zero chance. Right? <laughs> zero chance. He is long gone. And Come on, I can, fans. Yeah, the fans got this one wrong. You guys have done a phenomenal job, but this one was wrong. Uh, when you watch him on tape, to me, you start, he's an excellent tackler. He's so fluid for a big corner. You don't see guys move like this. He can really open up and drive on the football. He can find it and play it down the field. He's got outstanding hands. Once the ball gets in his hands, he can make some things happen. Buck always talks about coverage versatility. Can you get up in, guys? Can you press them? Can you play off? 
he can do it because he's physical and press and he's real smooth and fluid and off coverage. Height, weight, speed corners that are this type of an athlete, mm -hmm. they don't last till this point in the draft. He's going to be long gone. And, and obviously this is a need for Washington, but it's not really their style. They usually don't draft a corner in the first round. They've only done it two times. Well, it's because they're busy drafting defensive linemen. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. So. so the next pick, it's almost too perfect, guys. Oh, it, it, if we think yeah. about it here. Because oh, I get where Steelers fans are coming from, Rhett. This is great. Joey Porter Jr. Yeah, there's some sentimentality here, right, with yeah. dad uh, being a Pittsburgh Steeler. And that's actually where Joey kind of learned the game a little bit, got a chance to watch tape with guys like Joe Hayden when they were there together, learned how to be a pro, what it was like to prepare like a pro. Obviously, we all love him up in press coverage, uh, right? Get him up there, get physical with the receiver. But the coverage versatility is the one thing you question here mm -hmm. when you're drafting him up in the first round, some change of direction stuff when he's playing off that might be a bit of an issue. But get him, get him up there in front of a receiver, and then we'll work on the rest. So after back-to-back -back corners, here's how the next six picks shake out. A couple big guys on the line for Detroit and Tampa, and our second and third wide receivers of the night right there with Flowers and Addison. So let's chop it up a little bit here. DJ, Nolan Smith has seemed to be rising a lot yeah, since mm -hmm. the combine and that performance. So what do you think about him going to the Seahawks at 20? God bless him. If they can get <laughs> Nolan Smith right? sitting there at number 20, that's one of the best value picks of the first round. So to me, it's it's hard to find guys with this type of burst and you don't have to sacrifice the strength. I know he's only 230 plus pounds, but Hassan Reddick is the comp. He plays just like him and we saw what he could do last year. That buck, that would be a shocker to me. Almost as shocking as if Rhett were to sit up in his chair and take this show seriously. Hey, <laughs> we're sitting in the comfies for a reason here, folks. And look, for the Seattle Seahawks to get Jalen Carter at five and then to come back around oh and get Nolan Smith. Yes. Right? Because I was like, man, Tyree Wilson on the board there at five for the Seahawks. This would seem like a good spot, mm -hmm. you know. But, yeah, they end up going interior and then get their edge at 20. Uh, that's big time. I was looking at Zay Flowers going to the Chargers there is a real intriguing one. We've kind of been talking about the possibility of them, you know, mm. taking a wide receiver, even though they're pretty stocked up there with Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. But, yeah, you want to maximize this howitzer for a right arm that Justin Herbert has, and you want to get out there and compete with those teams and build more uh, towards, you know, getting – Beyond the first round of the playoffs, Zay Flowers is going to help you do it smaller guy, but I never see the size come into play here as a negative for him. Woo! He plays much bigger than his frame suggests. He plays much bigger. We give the Chargers the opportunity to build out that basketball team yeah. that we often refer to in terms of diversity in the wide receiver core. But let's go to Tampa Bay and Darnell Wright being able to really solidify the right tackle spots for the Bucks. New era, Baker Mayfield coming in. You have to think Ty Bowles wants to run the football more. We'll get a bully, a bully on the block, someone that can knock people around, move people people off the ball as they reestablish their identity. This is a nice fit. This is a really good player. The best right tackle that we've seen in this draft class. He has a chance to be a starter and a stud from day one. You know, Red, I just wanted to bring up the fact that you did mention earlier that we're sitting in the comfies and they're not that comfy to sit in on no. television. Like, if, uh, we, no, they're not. if we really wanted to sit in the comfies, <laughs> we would be like <laughs> doing the show right like this. This. Um, this. Well, we were talking about coverage versatility. So what I can give you here is one of these. I can give you one of these. Yeah. I can give you one of these. Yes. Yes. I could also give you a little Lego. Oh. Okay. Oh, over. I mean, hey. It's okay. just about getting getting your best, you know, best five players up there up front. That's good. That's good. Nice. Okay. What about the Jags? What players will they be getting? They're next on the clock, and there's no real consensus among the players that are there on PFF, but there's a clear favorite for the position, edge rusher. And Miles Murphy, I guess, is probably the best one left, right? Yeah, look, I, I think, um, you know, you took Trayvon Walker last year, number one overall. There's a similar size here uh, to what we're doing, 6'5", 275 pounds. The guy's got a motor that you love. Look, I, I thought corner, you know, Deontay Banks is a guy that we've been talking about a lot with this, with this pick. I wonder if the corners are gone if maybe the Jaguars would consider Brian Branch uh, mm. to help uh, as a nickel there and kind of come in to be a day one starter in that role. Otherwise, though, I mean, I think this is great. This is good value here for my, for Miles Murphy and for the Jags. Keep uh, loading up on the defensive front. Well, I think if you're the Jags and you have all these talented quarterbacks, you want to get them in a headlock, much like yes. Rhett was doing with this chair right here. I've never seen <laughs> I'm just telling you guys, you there's, there's the so many chair. different yes. ways you can go with these chairs. So many different ways. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I kind of wish they were a little bit more versatile for me. Um, <laughs>
<laughs> Bucky, you saw Brian Branch was obviously another popular mm -hmm. pick to the Jags. So if they don't end up going edge rusher um, with Miles Murphy, what would they be getting alongside Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker if they do go edge rusher there? Oh, so if they go and get Miles yeah. Murphy, the Jags are getting someone that can hunt the quarterback. Miles Murphy is terrific when it comes to the first step quickness, the athleticism. He has the ability to turn speed into power, and we see it over and over again when you watch his tape. Quick. He always is going to put that long arm right in the middle of your chest. He's going to walk you back, and then he's going to counter off of your reaction. You see it time and time again. Stiff long arm, puts it right in the center of the chest, and then he sets up the rest of his moves off of that. Because of the length, because of the strength and the power, it gives him a chance. But also, Red alluded to it, the effort, the energy, what he gives you. You think about the Jacksonville Jaguars and how close you are to joining the ranks of the elite. You're going to need pass rush to be able to get off to some of these talented quarterbacks in the AFC. Colleen, it's almost like, you know, when Bucky talks about the effort and the energy, it's like what we would have expected from a guy like Daniel Jeremiah on path to the draft, oh, except yeah. he only shows up once a week now. So. <laughs> wow. He's saving himself. Wow. He's busy. He's saving He's a himself. Busy guy. But um, when he does show up, he sits properly like a normal human being. <laughs> Let's you focus sit on the good thing. Comfortably in the comfies. I am just, I'm just trying nice. to accentuate what this chair is all about. I, I mean, we could move on to the Giants, uh, or we could well, keep we, talking about we, the comfies. I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable doing that, too. <laughs> Let's go to 25. The Giants, they're up. DJ, the fans, top two guys Ooh. are both gone at this point. So this pick has been skewed overwhelmingly towards wide receivers. So they'll take Quentin Johnston here. Well, they get some size if they're going to go with Quentin Johnston. I mean, that's going to be something to complement what they already have when you look at what they have on campus right now. You bring over Paris Campbell, that'll be an intriguing fit. See what he does there. Darren Waller is going to be seam stretching. We know what he brings to the table. Now you get some big size on the outside here. So they, they've got an intriguing mix of players now that they can yeah. throw out there offensively. Mm -hmm. Let's stick in the NFC East. Um, how do you guys think the Cowboys like picking right after the Giants? You think they love it? Um, or they're going like to love it? it in this scenario. <laughs> they're gonna the fans, they <laughs> wanted Bijan. He's long gone, but their number two option here, Michael Mayer, is still sitting right there for the taking. Bob. He, he's sitting right there. This is a pick all about Dak Prescott. It's about making the game easier for him. So having Mayer, who can control the middle of the field, he can stretch it as a seam runner, solid blocker, and Remember, Mike McCarthy takes over the play call. If you go back and look at his offenses, traditionally at Green Bay, he's going to utilize multiple tight end sets. He's going to feature the tight end to create some opportunities, some easy throwing opportunities for the quarterback. You want to get Dak Prescott back to playing at a high level, you make sure you put a big-time playmaker in the middle of the Be the mayor of Dallas. Let's oh, go. oh, look at that. He kind of looks a little bit like Dalton Schultz, just blonder. Like a little nice. Oh, good ball. Good ball. Good so, five edge rushers have gone so far, but there's a about to be a big run on them as we close out the first round and we'll see whose stock from the group is on the rise. Night one, just two days away. Rhett's well, gonna be in a, away, he's going to be in a lazy boy now. before the end of the show. <laughs> Five picks left in the first round and for the first time in I don't know how many picks, the players, <laughs> Bills fans, want and have taken the most is actually there. So hey. I'm talking about Emmanuel Forbes. That's great news. It is great news. Emmanuel Forbes is one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch in this draft class. Outstanding instincts and awareness as a ball hawking corner, meaning he understands what he's getting. He can see the hash split alignment. He makes plays on the ball. Six pick six in his career, 14 career interceptions. The only thing about Emmanuel Forbes that you don't like, he's 166 pounds. Mm. Really light, really thin. Don't know if he's going to be up to the physicality and durability that you need to play at Italy. The Incredibles, was it Elastic Man or something? <laughs> yes. Name? Like that's, that's where I'm going with my comp. So tough scene for the Bengals at this point. Great comp, by the way. Thank I feel you. like that needs Thank some you. love. Uh, tough scene for the Bengals. All five of those guys are off the board that fans wanted. Tight end has been the pick here over 40% of the time. So, Rhett, I don't know. How about Darnell Washington? I'm totally cool with how this shapes up for the Cincinnati Bengals. Tight end, really that one position that they've yet to invest in heavily along the offensive side of the ball, right? The Got a ton of playmaking wide receivers trying to remake the offensive line. And I feel like Darnell Washington helps in both of these cases, right? Gives you another pass catcher, another big time threat, especially down in the red zone. And then can also help that offensive line out if you want to keep him in. Uh, Max protect if you want to help him out in the run game, create some more holes there. So I, I like this pick, Darnell Washington to the Bengals. Yeah, and with such great receivers there in Cincinnati already, he'll have time to develop and not a ton of pressure on him right from the jump. So no clear picture at 29 next up for the Saints. 
They're all over the map with oh these boy. picks, but over 50% of the mocks have New Orleans taking a defensive lineman, and Will McDonald is still available. So, you know, um, we love that. If I'm, <laughs> I'm a Will McDonald guy, by the way. Yeah? Uh, to me, this is a fascinating story. This guy was 207 pounds when he got to Iowa State. They were going to redshirt him, and they, he was dominating so much in practice. It's like, well, we get four games to play with him before we redshirt him. Let's just throw him out there and see what happens. He goes out there and gets a sack in his first game, 207 pounds. So he still needs to put on weight. He's right around 230 right now. But this is the best natural edge rusher in terms of his ability to bend. He's pretty special. Okay. If you thought the Saints were all over the place, how about the Eagles at this point? Just about everyone has been mocked to Philly with this pick right here. They already drafted their running back with Bijan Robinson earlier. The popular choice is an edge rusher right here. So that is exactly what they'll get, Rhett. Yeah, let's go get him, Felix Senyidike Uzama. Hey, baby. Oh, F-A-U. F-A-U. Let's go in the house. Look, I remember watching him ahead of the combine and thinking, oh, man, this guy would be a perfect uh, drill tape for the hoop, right? Running that nice. hoop, bending around there, picking up that bean bag or whatever that thing is, dropping it back down. Uh, he can get after the quarterback in a hurry. And look, Philly fans, you can take Bijan Robinson at 10 and still come back and get your big man at 30 overall here. So I love this all around for the Eagles. You know, this is like a very – this is a learning experience for yes. me. I think for everybody at this point, just, you know, getting ready for the draft. It's Felix Tenedike Uzama. That, Nailed it. Is that correct? Uh, that yes. All right. Nice. Everybody at home, you can say it as well. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Last pick here, Kansas City Chiefs. And who can, you know, like they, they can do whatever out. they want. This is very much a luxury pick for them. Fans are pretty split between an edge rusher and a wide receiver. They went George Karloftis in the first round last year. But they're doubling down here to close out round one, DJ. Yeah, and look, B.J. Ojolari coming out of LSU. Mm-hmm. When you watch him, he can, again, we talk about the ability to bend once you get to the top. He can do that as well. He's got a lot of different tricks in his bag as a rusher. He can win high side with his speed. He's got a nice little inside counter move as well. I wish he was a little bit more rugged, a little more physical there. Uh, But when you're the Kansas City Chiefs, not going to face a lot of run game because you're going to be up by two touchdowns. So let him go (laughs) hunt the quarterback. That's fair. Okay, so that run on edge rushers makes eight total in this mock draft. Feels like a lot. Will Anderson was the first one off the board to Arizona, followed by Tyree Wilson to the Falcons at eight. But look, it's tough for quarterbacks to throw touchdowns if they're torpedoed on the way, like Patrick Mahomes would be. (laughs) Will Anderson Jr. Under immediate pressure off the edge and cannot escape. Will Anderson. Oh, my gosh. Tyree Wilson. Pressure coming. They got him for the sack. It's Tyree Wilson. One of the most successful in the country last year. Keon White. Pocket collapsing. And he gets sacked and he unloaded. It was Keon White. He has been all over the field. Lucas Van Ness. Hit and face planted. Quarterback sack courtesy of Lucas Van Ness. The leader of that defense. Nolan Smith. Blasted by Nolan Smith. Back to back. Huge plays for number four. Wow, that's what great pass rushers do, right? All right, it's time for a little stock up, stock down, presented by NFL All Day. And, Buck, we are going to focus on some pass rushers at, towards the bottom of the first round. Let's see if we like these fits or not. You ready to roll? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's start here. Nolan Smith, we've got him going 20th overall, Buck. Seattle Seahawks get Nolan Smith. Stock up, stock down. Stock up, stock up, stock up. This is an outstanding athlete, dynamic in his play. And when you watch him at Georgia, you see a lot of intriguing things that you want to build around. The speed, the athleticism, the natural instincts. I just think, man, you put him in Seattle with Pete Carroll, Pete Carroll's going to allow him to go. I think that is an all-day sucker playing for the Seattle Seahawks. All right, I like it. I'm a big Nolan Smith fan. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't like the chances of him getting there uh, at pick number 20. (laughs) All right, let's go to the ACC. Let's go to Clemson. Let's go to Miles Murphy, and he stays in the southeast. He goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm going to give this a stock up. Similar to what I just said about Nolan Smith, I don't think he gets there. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if he does, I like the fit. I think it's a great value. Uh, That Jags team, you get a chance to see a lot of them, Buck. The ability to finish games, that offense is going to go get you a lead. Now let's get some more guys mix in the mix here with Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen and company. Let's go hunt some quarterbacks. If he's available, that'd be a great pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars. All right, last one here. Keon White, no. No, no show Keon, here. Keon White didn't show up in the thing. No. And so for that, I'm going to say stock down. But I'm going to show you some stuff that says he should be in that conversation in the first round. When you look at the XOs, heavy-handed, love the power player, outstanding motor, nonstop and relentless in his play. You just see him time after time after time. He just doesn't give up on the play. And he wins because he outworks and outlasts the competition at the point of attack. We see the versatility. He can go inside. 
quickness, has enough power to get inside and make plays, very disruptive in a variety of areas. And then you talk about playing in space. Keon White is a really intriguing prospect because he has so much versatility, dynamic player. Someone is going to get a good player, regardless of whether he goes in the first round or later, he is going to be a guy that makes an impact in this league. I think if he had been healthy and been able to work out of the combine, we'd be talking about him more yes. in the first round. Had a great pro day, but that was outside of a lot of eyes uh, for folks that missed him there in Indianapolis. There you go, a little stock up, stock down, Colleen. Thank you, guys. Well, stock up on how we're wrapping the show because just a couple days until all the mocks can stop and we can actually find out what teams are really thinking. For now, we'll settle on our GMs here, their thoughts on the people's mock, what they won't be critical about, what they will be critical about. I think they're going to be critical about a lot of things. It's all coming up next. Stroud will now roll to the right again to the Georgia 40. Stroud fires deep down to the end zone, and it is grabbed in the end zone by Harrison. Touchdown! C.J. Stroud. Levis fires, throws a dart, lets it go, right on the money. Levis with the quarterback run. Got the first down and more. Richardson tucks it and runs. He loose, 35-30. Chomp, 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 touchdown, Gators. Throws down the seam, here's up, touchdown, Gators. Fires long down the field. There's Hyatt. He's got it to the checkerboard. Bombs away. Hooker, play fake. Bombs it long. Touchdown, Tennessee. Touchdown, Bryce Young. Bryce taking a shot and is able to get it away. Touchdown. Bryce Young threads the needle. What a strike. We're so close. We are basically there. The 2023 NFL Draft presented by Bud Light. It is this Thursday through Saturday. NFL Draft coverage presented by Verizon. There's also coverage on ABC, ESPN, and streaming on the NFL Channel and NFL Plus. It's everywhere. Okay, guys, this is it. This is your big moment. We got through the people's mock. So, DJ, what's your biggest gripe? Get in their mentions. Well, look, it was a really nice mock draft. I have to start out. It was, okay, I was surprised that it, well, it, it, it was pretty this good. can't be real. Yep. But there's a couple things I would take exception with. To me, Christian Gonzalez, the corner from Oregon, height, weight, speed corners, talked about it a little bit earlier. They're this athletic. It can find and play the football. They don't last long in any draft class. So, I, I fully expect he will be long gone. Uh, by the time he was uh, taken off the board in this mock draft. Yeah, look, and if I was the Minnesota Vikings at number 23, we had him going to get Jordan Addison from USC. I don't necessarily mind a wide receiver, um, but I just I feel like one that had maybe just a little bit more of a uh, different a difference in defined skill set than uh, Justin Jefferson. I'd go get it like a guy like Quentin Johnston to me is a big uh, kind of going up power forward type wide receiver might be one to think about there. Plus. He had Hinden Hooker available. Thought that might have been a shot to ah. take the fifth quarterback off the board. So that was my one gripe. Yeah, the only gripe. Las Vegas Raiders, Anthony Richardson. This would be Josh McDaniels going back to Florida for another project at quarterback like he did years ago with Tim Tebow. Do you want to see that project play out again? Because he's a dynamic player. He's dual threat. He has all these things. But, man, do you want to put that in an offense where you already have Devontae Adams? You have some big time playmakers on the outside. I just wonder if you can get a different quarterback that will allow you to maximize the talent that you have available. I'm curious to see where Richardson ends up going. I actually think that the two guys we just talked about, you with Richardson and me with Gonzalez, I think Gonzalez goes to the Raiders. I think that ends up being their pick, a now, secondary that needs ooh. a lot of help. Would you say that that is their pick over Devin Witherspoon, or maybe Spoon goes six to the Lions and they're left with Gonzalez? I think Witherspoon goes ahead of him, but yeah. I think both those corners go in the top. Yep. You know, I just want to say um, no notes to the fans. I think that they crushed this whole draft. <laughs> what a suck off. Pick. That's ridiculous. It was oh truly God. incredible. So wow. you guys, they're not going to give you. They're not going to give you a, a free. <laughs> Check mark, okay, you're not yeah. getting the free whatever. Check mark. Uh, this is our final mock draft together, but join DJ and I live from Kansas City because he has his final mock draft coming up. And one more to go. Listen, I don't know how much inspiration you're going to pull from today, but we're all gonna have to just wait and see. It's Wednesday, draft eve. April 26th, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'm excited. Let's go. That. Okay. That's big. Um, one week from tonight, we'll all be back from Kansas City. We'll be all tuckered out from the draft. <laughs> but what is one thing that we'll be talking about when we get back? I think it's what the Houston Texans do with the second pick. I mean, to be this close to the draft and none of us have a great feel for how that's going to go down, that's going to change the course and alter the direction of the entire draft. So, to me, Houston 
It's their draft. I know it's in Kansas City, but Houston's going to be the story. And, and I'll double up on that because uh, I think, DJ, one of the headlines is going to be the Houston Texans win the draft. I think they've got so much capital there. You're talking about five picks in the top 73, 2 and 12. Even if they don't take the quarterback at two, you take one of the top defensive players, the top defensive player on the board there, and then maybe use 12 – package that back in to come back up and get your quarterback, I think they're going to leave this draft with an offensive and defensive cornerstone for a decade. Bucky, what do you think? Is someone going to get fleeced? I mean, what's... I'm saying everyone needs to go about? to the grocery store and get all the mayonnaise, all the brown bananas, <laughs> all the stuff you want, because the story is going to be Will Levis and where he goes. A lot of conversation about Will Levis moving up the charts. Is he going to be the second quarterback to come off the board? At the end of the day, when we get done with draft weekend, we're going to talk about Will Levis potentially being somebody's franchise quarterback, and it may be a lot sooner than expected. Mm. Brett, how did it feel today? Like, I've been dying to well, it, ask you about your experience here on yeah. Mock Draft Live because you are our guest today. Yeah. You know, it house. does feel like um, scheme versatility fit is something that we <laughs> talk about a lot with players and mm -hmm. prospects and where they're eventually going to go. And I just feel like uh, what I've proved to you here today is that I'm one of those guys. I, if you want to start me at left tackle, fine. I'll probably be an all-pro guard. Maybe yes. I can come in as a center <laughs> if you need guard. to later. Plus, I've got this versatility with these yeah, seats. Like, oh, I can't go anywhere. Oh, I mean, wow. there's another one Holy just smoke. to kind of there, add to the bag here. There's time with scouts that uh -huh. we look at. It. We want to see guys rise to the level. We want to see them raise their level of play. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I'm looking forward to going to Kansas City. Uh, <laughs> it should be fun. We should have a great time out there. It's going to be a fun draft. DJ, yeah. you're about to catch a flight right I'm after this. Just moments, moments away the from Kansas flight, City. Huh? We all are. Yes. Thank you so much for watching, and make sure to catch all of our draft coverage. <laughs> We're locked and loaded. This has been Rhett Lewis' best show ever, and we just You're appreciate it. You're the best, Colleen. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>